Welcome to this video where we're going to have a look at jellyfish galaxies and what they are. Now, they're quite an unusual galaxy and they're found in very specific locations and they're called jellyfish galaxies because well they kind of look like jellyfish. So before we have a look at the specifics of these unusual galaxies let's just recap on some of the, the most common types of galaxies that we are aware of. So if you haven't seen any of my videos before then this is just a recap of spirals and ellipticals and you can skip to the other bit if you want to see just what the jellyfish galaxies are. So on the Hubble galaxy classification, it looks a bit like a tuning fork. And on the right hand side, you have your spirals. So the top part is your normal spirals and the bottom half is your barred spirals. A bit like the Milky Way, which is a barred spiral galaxy. Now, evolution wise, the actual galaxies will evolve from the right to the left. So they go from the right to the left. And things like their spiral arms get tighter, they lose gas because they actually get turned into stars. The stars form out of the gas, they lose their gas, um, and they get a bit redder as well because the stars age. Now, if you look at a spiral galaxy, they should have a reasonable to high amount of gas in them. They're still undergoing star formation, and they're generally going to have younger blue stars in them. So this is a nice image of a spiral galaxy there. And you can see there's a lot of blue in there, which is the younger blue stars, most likely confined to the spiral arms. Now, the elliptical galaxies sit on the left-hand side of this classification tuning fork, and they're mostly classified by their shape. So depending on what shape they are, they'll have some number associated with them. And that's pretty much how they are actually classified. And the differences between the spirals and ellipticals is that the ellipticals are, well, I suppose elliptical in shape. They're more kind of spherical, whereas a spiral galaxy is flat, it's more disc-like, it rotates in a common direction. Ellipticals, not necessarily the case. They also don't have any recent star formation occurring. They don't have any gas, and that's why there's no recent star formation. And they have populations of old red stars because there's no recent star formation occurring. You typically find that you've got the older population of stars there instead compared to the spiral galaxies. And this is important when we start to look at the jellyfish galaxies because we're not really going to see an elliptical jellyfish galaxy because they don't have any gas in them and it's the gas that's important actually. So where do you actually find these unusual jellyfish galaxies? Well they're normally found in enormous galaxy clusters. So here you've got an enormous galaxy cluster and they're going to be found in there. And it's in this sort of environment where you typically find them because it's what's stripping the gas away from inside of the actual galaxy itself. So here you've got another nice image taken by the James Webb Space Telescope. This is Pandora's cluster. It's actually probably classified as like a mega cluster. So it's actually multiple clusters of galaxies in one image that are close together. And you've got loads and loads of galaxies there. So this is another example of one of these large galactic structures we are likely going to find these unusual jellyfish galaxies. So here is a pretty good example here. And you can see it does look a bit like a jellyfish. Obviously they're much bigger than a jellyfish. But what you've got here is you've got these tenuous tentacles of gas that are being stripped from the galaxy. And you can see the blue line there. And that's the direction of those tentacles. And these are just tenuous lines, tentacles of gas coming out of the actual galaxy itself. The main spiral galaxy is located there in the, in the box. And then you've got these tentacles coming from kind of below that, really. So it looks like the tentacles on a jellyfish where the main body of the jellyfish would actually be the galaxy itself. So here's another good example here. And you can see you've got these tentacles, those thin, tenuous tentacles of gas coming out from the bottom there. So you've got the main spiral again in the same sort of location, which would be the body of the jellyfish. You then got these tenuous tentacles of gas again being stripped away from that galaxy. So they start to resemble a very large jellyfish. And then this one is obviously quite a good one. It's got really long tentacles of gas there. And again, same as the other previous ones, you've got the main body there, and then you've got the actual tentacles coming out. But the key thing really to note is that these jellyfish galaxies are going to start out gas rich. So that means they have to have a lot of gas in them to start with. So you're not really going to see an elliptical galaxy that's going to have these long tentacles because they just don't have the gas content. So jellyfish galaxies, they will start out gas rich. And what happens is there's some ram pressure 
uh, that strips the gas away. And this occurs because the galaxy is moving through interstellar medium in the actual galaxy cluster itself. And then over time, that galaxy will then become gas poor. So it essentially depletes the galaxy of gas. So going back to this one here, why do they have tentacles? Well, the galaxy is actually moving through the interstellar medium in this galaxy cluster. So these galaxy clusters, the galaxies are not static. They're not just stationary. I mean, they may look it because of the scale, the size of these clusters, but they are moving around. And you get a lot of galaxy galaxy collisions in these clusters as well. So they are moving. And the direction of movement of this particular one is to the lower right where the arrow is pointing. And because it's moving through the interstellar medium there, what's actually happening is any loosely bound gas in the galaxy receives a drag. So because it's going through the interstellar medium, there's a bit of a drag there on the gas that isn't, well, it's loosely bound to the galaxy, so it couldn't be quite easily stripped off. And then that tentacle of gas, that line of gas, trails the direction of movement of what the galaxy is actually moving at. So it kind of leaves the gas behind it, which then look like it's got tentacles. Now, the really interesting thing here, actually, is that stars can then form in those tentacles as well. So in this example here, you've got the tentacles coming out from the main galaxy, but then you've got a region of star formation. So if you've got a high enough density and the gas is actually gravitationally collapsing, you can then form stars in the tentacles themselves. So it's not just confined to forming stars in the actual galaxy itself. They can then form outside the main galaxy in its tentacles as well. So thank you for watching. And if you enjoy, then check out some of the other videos.